severe storms, devastating hurricanes, and massive walls of sea pummeling into major cities. These are the kind of extremes that movies like The Day After Tomorrow propagate about global warming. Even Jake Gyllenhaal isn't safe. This, you know, is fake. But you can get similar stories from less convincing actors and no cool special effects. But you still get all the trauma. Brings us to this week's grim report about global warming and a looming climate catastrophe. Extreme weather, from drought to heavy rain and cyclones. The seas are rising. Hurricanes will be more powerful like Katrina and polar bears may be headed toward extinction. We don't see that happen. Tornadoes are not increasing. Uh, the frequency of hurricanes is not increasing. The world is heating up fast and we have ourselves to blame. I'm going to tell you something about the media and global warming that you don't hear real often. It's not all your fault, okay? The problem with the media is that um, it's essentially become a business and everything's got to be more sensationalized. This just isn't hype and scaremongering, that global warming is real. The fear element drives the media and the media drives the hype. Fear is, uh, is part of the equation now. When I started out in 1970s, global cooling was the consensus. He's not exaggerating. Take a look at this article from the LA Times in 1978. No end in sight to 30-year cooling trend in Northern Hemisphere. Or Time Magazine's big spread from 1974 asking, another ice age? Newsweek said global cooling evidence had begun to accumulate so massively that meteorologists are hard pressed to keep up with it. Just switch out warming for cooling and they've written this before. It's true. The hype has been steady. The only thing that has changed is the temperature of the catastrophe. Take a look at this headline from the New York Times in 1959 claiming a warmer Earth evident at the polls. But just two years later, in the same newspaper, we find this. Scientists agree, world is cooler. Even in the mid-90s, the Times was talking about a frozen Earth. Except it wasn't the 1990s, it was 1895. I get whiplash reading these things. My whole career has been going around saying, the climate changes all the time. Get used to it. Drowning. Huh, cool, huh? You've seen these horrific scenarios everywhere based purely on catastrophic hypotheticals that dramatically exaggerate even what the UN says. It's Al Gore's best supporting actor. The word if. If we have an increase of five degrees, if Greenland broke up and melted, if this were to, to go, sea level worldwide would go up 20 feet. Where he's misleading is that he gives the impression that this is something that is likely to happen. The likelihood of this is next to nil. The IPCC report is that the upper limit of sea level rise by the year 2100 is going to be about 23 inches. That's why Al Gore makes up 20 feet. The truth isn't scary. Just look at the difference between Greenland's ice melt in Al Gore's scenario when spread out over a century versus what the IPCC projects. To come up with 20 feet is really uh, grasping at straws, I think, but it does make a dramatic image. It makes a startling announcement, and uh, that is where, as I heard one commentator say, it makes blood shoot out of my eyes. Gee, I wonder who he could be talking about. All right, how about another co-star? It's the so-called hockey stick graph. This is the version shown by Al Gore. However, the original version used by the IPCC contained a wide margin of error not shown in an inconvenient truth. Inconvenient, huh? Critics say there's even more missing. There are two factors that most climatologists think happen that don't seem to be included in it, which are the Little Ice Age, which is a very cold period that ended in the late 19th century, uh, and the medieval warm period uh, around 1,000 or so. Since the third UN report, for which this was the smoking gun, there's been a fourth UN report. Does anybody see a hockey stick in there anywhere? I can't see you. It's not in there. Guess what? It's airbrushed out in classic fashion, and they don't even mention why it's not here. What hockey stick? I didn't see any hockey stick. Clearly, I mean, these guys haven't seen the movie, right? Because any movie with charts and graphs this big 
I mean, they've got to be right. Now, here's one of Al Gore's favorite charts, comparing CO2 levels and temperature. When there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer. Look how far above the natural cycle this is. And we've done that. We? Meaning you and me? I guess it looks pretty convincing. Gore assumes here that CO2 levels are causing temperatures to rise. But look, could it be the other way around? We now know for certain that the temperature changes before the CO2. And one of the fundamental assumptions that Gore doesn't understand is that in the theory of global warming due to humans is the CO2 goes up, the temperature will go up. Well, the ice core record shows it's exactly the opposite. Chris, one thing that somebody could Google right now, and you, you watched the movie and you said, oh, geez, I wish people would just Google this fact. In the movie, In Convenient Truth, what would be the one fact they should Google? Well, the cause and effect relationship of CO2 and temperatures. Obviously, temperatures go up throughout history. The scientific literature is fairly clear, fairly uniform. Uh, temperatures go up, then CO2 concentrations go up. CO2 does not drive temperature. No serious scientist, no peer-reviewed scientist is saying that, okay? Those who deny global warming are just flat out wrong. Ellen Goodman from the Boston Globe wrote, let's just say that global warming deniers are now on par with Holocaust deniers. Somebody says that whenever you, you get into uh, Nazi re uh, connections, you've really jumped the shark. No Nazi references? But how would these people even form sentences? Even I got to jump into the World War II of weather. Robert F. Kennedy called me CNN's chief corporate fascism advocate when asked why by the Washington Post. He recalled that I was voicing doubts about global warming a few weeks back. When you have the science on your side, you argue the science. When you don't have the science on your side, you attack the messenger. Lost among all the extreme rhetoric? Any semblance of balance. An inconvenient truth is a study in absolutes, a one-sided argument devoid of any gray area. There's not a single fact or date or number that's been used to make this up that's in any controversy. Isn't there a disagreement among scientists about whether the problem is real or not? Actually, not really. Attention! You're about to meet people that aren't really real! Politicians and some of the scientists like to say that there's a consensus now on global warming or the science has been settled. But uh, you have to ask them, what is there a consensus on? Because it really makes a difference. What are you talking about? The only consensus I'm aware of is that it's warmed in the last century. They, they, they completely ignore the fact that there's this thing called the Oregon Petition that was signed by 19,000 professionals and scientists who don't agree with the idea that we are causing climate change. I can't tell you how many calls I've received from parents saying their kids are now being shown an inconvenient truth completely unchallenged, not just in science class, but in art and math classes. A green hotel in California has just replaced the traditional in-room Bible with an in-room copy of an inconvenient truth. Isn't that appropriate? Al Gore's version of climate change has no longer become science. It's dogma. And if you question it, you are a heretic. You'd think that scientists would look back at their history when out-of-control churches locked them in towers to stop progress and realize that just yelling, the debate is over, and these people are heretics or Nazis, as loud as you can, is not really the best way to advance science. However, many have discovered that it is the best way to secure funding. For now, all we can do is look for sober solutions in a world drunk on hysteria. The debate is not over. I have a feeling it's just beginning. From New York, good night.